Will the Rams rest their starters in week 18? How they can still get the sixth seed even if they lose the 49ers? We've got week 17 winners and losers. That's coming up next here on Locked on Rams. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Ramley? And welcome to another episode of Locked on Rams, your daily podcast covering your Los Angeles Rams. Free and available wherever you get your podcast. Locked on Rams, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. We're also available over on YouTube. We're trying to get to 11,000 subscribers. We're very close. So if you haven't yet joined the party, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, hit that like button, and let us know who your biggest winners and losers for the Rams win over the Giants. And should they rest their starters in week 18 versus the 49ers? My name is Doug McCain. Friends call me DMAC. You can follow me on the X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. I've been covering LA sports for over a decade. SI, 24-7 Sports, Dodgers Nation. Now the Rams four locked on. And as always, I'm joined by the Rams pre-half and post-game show host for the Rams flagship radio station, ESPN 710 LA. He's in his eighth season covering your Los Angeles Rams. The people's champ, Mr. Travis Rogers. You can follow him on X at Travis Rogers. And on today's show, we got horns up, horns down, week 17 winners and losers. And should the Rams rest their starters in week 18? But first, this episode of Locked on Rams is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel, make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Now, Travis here on this episode, we're diving into the topic of the day, which is should the Rams rest their starters? I mean, they still have right. a lot to play for here, but let's get into this. Uh, you, got to, you got something to say about uh, the podcast. Well, it was uh, Greg Bergman, who I work with here at 710 ESPN, was going back to his place last night, ran into one of his neighbors and asked one of his neighbors, hey, what are you doing right now? And his neighbor, James Hasley, said, I'm watching the Locked on Rams podcast. Have you ever heard of it? So do just a random shout out to James Hasley, who uh, is a, a loyal every day or to the Locked on Rams pod, who I heard through a third party was watching it last night. We love you, James. Good job. Tell 10,000 of your friends to do the same thing. We appreciate you a great deal. Shout out to James, man. We appreciate all you guys. And yeah, you guys really helped out. The channel is growing a lot. And we know everyone's so excited about the playoffs that are on the horizon. Just couldn't be more excited about the direction that this team's headed in. And really, Travis, I think really the big topic that Sean McVay is dealing with is do you rest the starters? Which starters do you rest? Do you let Puka Nakua get 29 yards and a few more catches to set that new rookie record? Well, let's kind of start with what's at stake because we talked yeah. about it before the show. You can still get the sixth seed even if you do lose the 49ers. If the Packers lose to the Bears at home, which they haven't done since 2015, but if you look at this team the way they sit right now, you got to get healthy. You got to make sure you're in a good position heading into that wild card game. I'm kind of leaning towards Matthew Stafford not playing, Kyron Williams, Cooper Cup, but I do want to see Carson Wentz get that start, and you're not going to see CMC on the other side. Hopefully, your backups can have more success than some of theirs, and you find a way to win, and you get that six seed locked up. There's a lot of moving parts, right? There's a lot of if you do this, then this can happen, and if you win here and this guy loses here, and what happens in Washington and Philadelphia and all of these other places, there's a, there's a lot of things, but simplify, right? What is the most important thing for the Rams to be at the end of, say, let's call it 4.30 on Sunday afternoon? What's the one thing that you need to make sure has happened? Everybody's healthy, right? That your most important players, Matthew Stafford, Puka Nakua, Kyron Williams, Cooper Cup, Aaron Donald, go right on down the list. We know who they are. That those guys are healthy as possible going into your week, uh, your wild card matchup, whether it's Dallas, whether it's Philly, whether it's uh, 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 Detroit, whoever it may be, be as healthy as you possibly can. That's priority number one. That's why I'm virtually certain that Matthew Stafford's not going to play. I was having some conversations yesterday, and I have it on pretty good authority that Stafford will not play. 
that Stafford is not going to go out there. You might see a little bit of some other guys here or there. I think Puka's an interesting one that we can talk about in a second. But we're going to get our first good look at Carson Wentz. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of game planning going on. I don't think you're going to put a whole lot on film that you're going to be able to, if you're a Rams opponent, going to look at and say, okay, they're going to do this or that. I think it's going to be a little bit. I mean, obviously, there's there's more at stake and you're playing different guys, but it's going to be a little bit like uh, a, a preseason game where it's going to be pretty vanilla. You're going to see some backups playing, a lot of snaps along the way, but most importantly, I would be very, very surprised if you see number nine play a single play because, like we well know, if he's not available, you are dead in the water. He's got to play. He's got to play well. So I would be shocked if we saw Matthew Stafford. And Matthew Stafford is coming off really one of his worst games of the yeah. season where he did get banged up. And if he is out, this team doesn't have any chance at all whatsoever. And I think, look, that's definitely the most sensible move. That's probably the right move. But look, let's be honest here. I mean, this game isn't meaningless. I mean, the Rams nope. still have a ton to play for against the 49ers. And if you look at it and some of the results of being a six seed versus seven seed, your chances of having a Successful playoff run as a six seed are much higher than a seven seed. Since the new playoff format in 2020, the six seeds are four and two. They've won at least one playoff game every single year since they rolled out the new structure. If you remember, of course, the Rams, they went up to Seattle. They beat the Seahawks in 2020 yep. with John Wolford. And a six seed has won a playoff game every year in the last six years. Compared to a seven seed, they're 0 and 6. The 49ers, they made the NFC Championship game in 2021 as a six seed. So if you lock in that six seed, too, we get their dream matchup. We That's get our it. World Series, our Super Bowl, our NBA Finals. I want to see this team play the Detroit Lions. As my mom always likes to say, it's ratings heaven. That would be <laughs> ratings heaven. Detroit versus L.A. Matthew Stafford versus Jared Goff. I need that matchup like I need oxygen, Mr. Travis Rogers. Yeah, no, it's by far the most intriguing. Uh, never mind for Rams fans like us. It's the most intriguing option in the first week of playoff games. The Rams going to Detroit is the a it might be the best game on paper and b it's certainly the most interesting matchup that you're going to find for all the obvious reasons matthew stafford going back to detroit for the first time since they uh, made the trade with the rams a few years ago no really playoff success to speak of while he was in detroit with the lions some individual success to be sure no playoff success so you've got that entire story and by matthew stafford still incredibly well regarded in the city of detroit incredibly well regarded by the detroit lions organization and then you've got the whole Goff mcvay thing i mean it's 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 an amazing story somebody's going to be coming out of that going i was right you were wrong yeah. well, one of those two yeah. guys is going to be able to say that right that that's inevitable now maybe a little less with jared goff because he's still got to go do some other things along the way but how good would that feel for him and how validating would it be for Sean McVay? We already know that they won the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, but then that head-to-head -head matchup, that would be a whole thing. And here's the rub of it all, DMAC. This is probably the best matchup for the Rams. This is probably, we've seen them play Philadelphia and they hung for a half and Philly's playing bad. Philly is not playing good football but if you end up in Philadelphia, it's cold, there's weather, and we know that doesn't suit the Rams particularly well most of the time. Dallas ran over the Rams. I know that it's been a long time ago. I know the Rams are a different team. I know that the Cowboys have a history of kind of freaking out in the playoffs and all those things. That's a tough matchup in Dallas. The Dallas Cowboys are really, really good at home. The Lions have no playoff history. They've got a quarterback that can make some weird decisions. They got a head coach that makes all sorts of weird decisions going up against the Rams team. It's by far the best matchup for them. I, I think the Rams will try to win the game, obviously, but I don't know if they empty their bag trying to win the game. I think if they fall to the seven, I think Sean McVay is okay with that. I think that's going to be demonstrated by him not playing Matthew Stafford. I don't think you'll see a lot of Kyron Williams. And I think the 49ers are going to have their foot off the gas too. So it may be a battle of which of the JV versions of these two teams can beat the other one because uh, the Niners have literally nothing to play for at all. The Rams have about that much to play for. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like Stafford, Cub, Kyron, they should all rest because they're all a little banged up. Then Aaron Donald, Jones, Turner, Witherspoon. I mean, those guys, Puka, I guess all they give them. me a chance to start the record. But going back to what we're talking about the Detroit, 
matchup. That's what I'm looking at, and this is the number one reason why. Yes, it's a juicy storyline. Yes, it'd be great for TV ratings. Yes, everyone wants to see that matchup because of the Stafford versus Goff, Detroit versus the Rams, but it's also the matchup that gives the Rams the best chance to advance. You look at that Detroit defense, they have really struggled in the last few weeks. Since week 11, they're 28th against the pass. A healthy Matthew Stafford in a dome environment on field turf with Puka Nakua, Cooper Cub, and Robinson. He's going to absolutely cook, and I have all the confidence in the world that they go up there and score a lot of points. You compare that to that Cowboys team. They've been so good at home. Not only did they beat the Rams 43-20, to 20, you saw the Cowboys, they're undefeated at home this season. They've scored 30 points or more in Jerry's world in all but one game this year. I mean, they've been absolutely dominant, averaging 37.4 points per game, allowing just 15.9 points a game. So I just really hope they find a way to get that match against the Detroit Lions because that will give themselves the best chance to win. But yeah, get, and Goff too, you saw the big the big deer in the headlights. Oh, yeah. Goff eyes that we've oh, seen yeah. against Dallas. I mean, uh, is he built for the first home game in 30 years? You mean to tell me they're going to beat the Rams there? I don't know about that. I don't care if... Dan Campbell's going to try to bite kneecaps off. It ain't happening. (laughs) It's not. uh, Look, I want the the Lions. I think the Rams in a perfect world would want the Lions. I think in a perfect world, the Lions don't want the Rams. I think they'd much rather see a team like Green Bay or somebody like that come in there, even though we've seen that matchup a handful of times. But I'll say this. If the Rams have to go to Dallas, they can win. It's, (laughs) it's, It's not an ideal matchup. It's not perfect. But if you're telling me, Mike McCarthy versus Sean McVay, who do you like? I like Sean McVay. If you're saying Matthew Stafford against Dak Prescott, who do you like? I like Matthew Stafford. If you're talking Kyron Williams against Tony Pollard, who do you like? I like Kyron Williams. You Now, CeeDee Lamb might be the best wide receiver on the field, but the best wide receiver group probably belongs to the Los Angeles Rams. Now, defensively, that gets a little more complicated there because the Cowboys can go do a whole bunch of things along the way. But while it's not perfect, it's something that the Rams can can win. They can go into Dallas. Of all of them, I think Philly's the one I want the least. Yeah, absolutely. And look, the Rams, they beat the Cowboys in the 2018 division around 30 to 22. Yep. Remember that back in the Collie days, yep. Philly. Well, maybe we'll talk about them on tomorrow's episode as a possible opponent as well. But coming up here on Locked On Rams, we got horns up, horns down, winners and losers from week 17. That's coming up next here on Locked On Rams. All right, so we're getting into playoff time, right? We've got playoff football that's around the corner. We're in the middle of the NBA season. You're in the middle of the NHL season. But maybe you don't have your tickets. Game time. Put the Game Time app on your phone, and then you don't have to worry about when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sporting events in your area, music, comedy, theater events, Everything that's near you, game time can have you covered, and you don't have to worry about it right up until the beginning of the show. In fact, you can even do it an after or an hour up to an hour after the show. The game time app does it all for you. Killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the best best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets for you. So if you're a little bit like most of us and you've, you know, maybe procrastinated a little bit and you haven't gotten quite on the tickets for that next big thing, download the Game Time app, create an account and use the code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create that account, redeem the code locked on, that's L O C K E D O N for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And we're off running here on Locked On Rams. Thank you for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single weekday, free and available wherever you get your podcast. Locked On Rams, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And a reminder that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel and also a shout out to our everyday listeners we appreciate you guys watching and listening to every single episode and you can be an everyday listener too membership is 100 free and you won't miss a thing about your los angeles rams now travis here in our first winners and losers 
we got to go with Kobe Turner. Kobe yeah. Turner was an absolute dog, a 92.2 PFF grade. My man had 10 pressures, three sacks. If you look at the QB hits, if you look at just his motor going around and chasing Tyrod Taylor, ain't making ankle tackles. I mean, he was just absolutely phenomenal. And if you look at FanDuel, if you look at any betting sites, I want to see his name up there for the defensive rookie of the year. The sure. disrespect is real for Kobe Turner. I don't get it. Yeah, he's well, okay. Let me let me give you a little number here. Since Aaron Donald's come into the league, here are the list of people that have had as many sacks in their rookie season as Aaron Donald. Okay. DeForest Buckner, Chris Jones, Kobe Turner. That's it. Okay. That that's it. The, those guys are legit. There's not one name on that list like, oh, I'm, okay, well, that did. This means this guy is not only good, he's going to be really good for a long time. And I think what's so exciting about him is where he is now relative to where he was at the beginning of the season and in the middle of the season, he's a lot better. And he's continuing to get better. And he's doing that thing that I think that you and I were really excited about and optimistic about was who's going to take advantage of of Aaron Donald still being Aaron Donald. If Aaron Donald is getting doubled, which he does virtually every snap, and tripled frequently, somebody else needs to go clean up. Kobe Turner's done it. Byron Young's done it. We've had some guys be able to kind of take advantage of that. It's been a huge part of why they've been as successful as they have. The defense is never going to get the credit that the offense does. But keep in mind, the middle of the season, this team was in games because the defense kept them in games. The offense is finally caught up. But without Kobe Turner, without with obviously without Aaron Donald, but Turner and Young specifically, as young players, first-year players, they've done an unbelievable job. And just look at those names you mentioned, right? I mean, those are some of the best players in the league that yeah. have been good for a long time. And yeah. Kobe Turner is another guy that just looks like he could be a foundational player in the same way that Steve Avila has been for the offensive line. And the difference is, we're talking about a third-round pick, right? We're talking about someone that has emerged, like you mentioned, he's taking advantage of playing with Aaron Donald. And also, give him credit, too, for his ability to stop the run. because He's been really great yeah. against the run as well. I could not be more impressed with Kobe Turner. I think the whole team, they just love the conductor doing his thing how about him breaking out the little bass guitar too he's kind of he's got like a one-man band out there well you've seen it like right what was it they could go back a couple of maybe it was cleveland i forget where it was where he and aaron donald are kind of skipping off the field together just really enjoying it and i think there's something to it when the game slows down a little bit when you start to have some success when you know what you're doing, when you know that you're secure in your position, when you can just go play and not worry about nearly as much about, do I have the scheme right? Do I have my lane right? Do I have my gap coverage? All of the things that young players are going to be preoccupied with because they're still trying to learn it. And when you can kind of just say, okay, I know that stuff now. I can just go and play. And you're doing the conductor and you're playing the bass guitar and you're skipping off the field with Aaron Donald. I think that's a really good sign that I'm feeling pretty good about where I am as a player. I'm feeling pretty good about where we are as a team. And this team is going to have to make some big defensive plays. If they're going to beat San Francisco on Sunday, and more importantly, if they're going to beat Detroit, Philly, or Dallas, they're going to need that guy to play well. And he's been playing really well for the last few months. He's had a great uh, rookie season. I couldn't be more happy with him. I think he's going to get better, too. I think they're going to improve yeah. body composition and experience. I think he's going to be a really, really good player for this Rams team for a really long time. Then, of course, you got to mention Aaron Donald, another fantastic performance after a couple of weeks where you didn't hear his name called too much, but a 91 PFF grade at three sacks, six pressures. He was fantastic against the run as well, too. And, yeah, I just love seeing the role he has on this team as far as being that mentor of Kobe Turner, of Byron Young. And I think it's kind of re-energized him at this stage of his career. I think that's right. I, I think that the re-energization or whatever that word, re-energizing of his career is clear. It, 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 you, you can see it. There was some fatigue, I think, last year. I think there was a little bit of what exactly do we have going on at the beginning of this year. Go back to training camp when, or even prior to training camp when Les Snead and Sean McVay were talking to him about, you know, what they're going to do. He said, just find some guys that care. Well, they did. He does. And it shows that he he can still be the best player in football when he when, when the opportunities present themselves. Now, maybe it's not every single play like it was for the last 10 years or so, but it's most plays, and he is still one of the most dangerous guys in the league. 
Absolutely. He's just an absolute beast. He continues to be. And then, of course, Byron Young had a TFL on that first drive where he chased down Tyrod Taylor. And then they had that seventh sack of the season in the Giants' second possession. So he was really, really fantastic as well. I mean, he had a very solid game. And then got to give credit to Joe Nopu. We talked about it a little bit yesterday. Yeah. He had a 90.6 PFF grade for his pass blocking grade. Didn't do as well against the run at a 67 PFF grade against the run, but did a really nice job against that pass rush. And I think you got to give a lot of credit. He's your swing starter, right? The, he's your, he's your guy that if you need him to come out of the bullpen, I can do that. If you need me to take the ball and start the game, you know, a, a handful of times a year, I can do that too. I don't know if he's a guy you put into your rotation necessarily. We've seen that, and it hasn't really worked out. But Sean McVay has always said, we have six guys for five spots. And whoever the odd man out is, and it's been Opum, they're going to play, and they're gonna, we're going to expect them to be ready to play. And give Opum, I know that Rams fans get frustrated with him. I know that they paid him a lot of money and all of this stuff that goes along with that money. But the fact of the matter is maybe he hasn't taken over for Andrew Whitworth the way that we wanted him to when they originally drafted him and they paid him accordingly. He's been an important part of what they do, whether it's filling in for Havenstein or Jackson or filling in at guard at times. He's like we talked about yesterday. The everyday is will remember this. He's started games at three different positions on that offensive line this year and done pretty well at all of them. Is he going to make an all pro? Of course not. But can he play on your offensive line for a period of time and do a good enough job? Hell yeah, he can. And we saw it again on Sunday. And I just like having there as that safety valve, that safety yep. net to just plug in. And that versatility definitely provides a lot of value. So I feel good about Joe Nopum and the role he has on this team. Of course, like you said, not your starting left tackle. If you look at that contract and was that a good idea? That's a whole different conversation different, of right. what he's able to do on Sunday feel really good about it but coming up next in our final segment we got horns down who struggled in the rams win over the giants that's coming up next here on locked on rams all right d-back let's talk about fandle right the nfl regular season we're just about wrapped up right there just one week to go but there's still all sorts of time to get in on the action with fandle america's number one sports book because right now new customers you get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. You heard me right. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. You place a $5 bet, win or lose, FanDuel gives you 150 in bonus bets. The app is super easy to use. There are so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. It's the best way to find popular parlays and more. You just want to be a little more traditional, right? You want to look at that line. Rams are four and a half point dogs right now. The total's 42. You can play it all at FanDuel. So you got to go to FanDuel, FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. Let me give it to you again. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Don't forget that promo code locked on FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And hey, welcome back to Locked On Rams. Thank you for being Locked On Rams, your first listen every single weekday, free and available wherever you get your podcast. Locked On Rams, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, Travis, here in our third segment, we've got some horns down losers. And I have to just give the entire special teams unit Ew. kind of the horns down on this one because this was, if you're watching this episode, it means you survived watching the Rams special team unit on Sunday. Lucas yeah. Haverisick, he's driving Uber this morning. Got, I don't know where he's at. Luke. but <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you look at DVOA, Travis, they have the one of the worst special teams units ever, six worst special teams ever. According to DVOA, this is from Aaron Schatz on, at Aaron Schatz NFL. So this is a historically bad special team unit. It's not just the kicking. You got sometimes Ethan Evans out kicking the coverage, but it's the punt returns we saw against the Ravens, punt return for a touchdown. We saw against the Giants, you let them in the game at the end with a punt return for a touchdown. Something needs to be fixed. I don't know. If you might consider change with Chase Blackburn and we talk about how great the coaching has been for this team throughout the year, but something needs to change and be corrected very quickly because they got to clean things up because something's just not right. I think that there's there's a lot there. Let's kind of go through this. They do need to make a change, but it's not going to happen now and it's not going to happen before they're done playing. 
right? I think that there's a virtual certainty that you'll have a new special teams coordinator next year. I think it's also a virtual certainty you're not going to have one before the playoffs start. This is what you got. So you're going to have to make the best out of it. I'm going to do the thing, DMAC, that I know that people that listen to the show every day know that I'm known for. I'm going to be super optimistic here for a second. You ready? <laughs> okay. They're going to start punting the ball out of bounds. They're not, they're, they're, they're not going to let this happen anymore. And the way that you can prevent it from happening, kick the ball out of bounds. Right, just kick the ball out of bounds and eliminate the return. Are you going to pin anybody inside the five yard line doing that? Probably not. Are you going to give some decent field position doing this? Probably. But what you will prevent is take that big return off of the table. That's number one. Number two is what you can. The the, the special teams have been a, a problematic for them for the simple reason. They're young, right? They don't have a lot of veteran players. They don't have a lot of guys that have been around the league a really long time. Well, who plays special teams? Backups, right? Who are the backups on this team? They're really young guys. So they're learning as they go. And hopefully, even though it hasn't been particularly good, it gets a little better. Lastly, I think Sean McVay is going to really change the way he goes about doing things. Now, there may come a scenario where you're fourth and eight and you got to kick a 38-yard field goal and you can't go for it. I get it. And you cross your fingers and hope. But I do think you're going to see him get more aggressive. I think you're going to see him change his play calls, knowing that he has four downs to get 10 yards as opposed to three downs to get 10 yards. So I think going into this, if you have a little bit of a different mindset, there are some silver linings here. If it comes down to you got to make a 45-yarder to win a game, Cross your fingers and toes and hope it goes through because God only knows what that's going to be. But there are some things I think that you can be hopeful. Of. In particular, that return game, the punt coverage, they're just going to punt the ball out of bounds. Yeah, I think that's absolutely the adjustment they have to strongly consider. I think they've also had some bad luck too. Some blocks in the backs that yeah. weren't called against the Ravens. Skoranek getting called for that leaping penalty there. And I agree with you. The inexperience on special teams. I mean, really, that's how some guys hang their hat in this league for the first couple of years. And we saw Jason Taylor, him make a nice play. I mean, there were some okay moments, but at the end of the day, it's really magnified because the kickers are missing kicks. And yep. if you had a kicker that was solid, you probably wouldn't be talking about this. You'd probably live with the occasional punt return for a touchdown. But yeah, just all in all, it's been historically bad. Now, another horns down, I definitely want to... Was that Travis? I was just going to say, I, I think this this goes back to the very – with Matt Gay leaving to go to Indianapolis, and they paid him. And, and I think the Rams made a calculated decision, which is, are we really getting ready to go have a season where a kicker could be the difference between us advancing in the playoffs or not? I don't think anybody thought that this is going to be where this team actually is. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been in this position to begin with. They had a guy that was really good. Uh, they opted. They, this was a let's save some money. Let's get together. Let's get ready for 2024. And now all of a sudden it's like, wait, we might win 10 games. And wait, the one thing that might prevent us from making another run to an NFC championship or or beyond is a kicker. And now there's nobody available. Now there's really no one to go get. There's no money to go spend. I, I, I really do think this is a problem of success as opposed to a problem of neglect. I don't think anybody thought this is where they were going to be. That's a really good point. It's more of a glaring need because of the unexpected position that you're in because you yeah. exceed expectations, right? And honestly, look how they got gay, right? Going through a ton of kickers. They've hit on that position through this same approach. But hey, this time it hasn't worked out from the kicker spot, but they've hit on all these other positions. So I'd rather hit on my rookie yeah. edge rusher, my rookie interior lineman, yeah. and my fifth round receiver versus the kicker. They can find a way to correct this. And I'm just hoping and praying, crossing my fingers and toes, <laughs> that Brett Maher can find it and just be solid. I'll say this. I'll say this. Let's hope that first one goes through. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just go one at a time, baby. Yeah. That whether it's a PAT, whether it's a short field goal or whatever, let's hope that first one, because we saw what happened with Maher last year when he missed a PAT. And then all of a sudden all hell broke loose and he missed five in a row. But Let's hope that because if the first one goes in, I like the chances of making the second one. If the first one misses, go for two. We're just, at this point, just line up and go for two and hope you get it half the time. That first one's going to be so critical. I agree. <laughs> now, a quick one for Horns Down, Akella Witherspoon. I mean, he's been yeah. definitely one of the big bright spots for this Rams defense, but he was really starting to have some bad moments of late. I mean, he was targeted seven times, give five 
catches. You gave that 80 yard touchdown and you're seeing this Rams secondary struggle to give explosive plays at times. And it was kind of picked on and definitely someone that definitely want to see him turn around and start to feel good with some momentum heading into the playoffs. I think the fact that the Rams have been winning games have kind of camouflaged the problem that you're talking about, that the Cleveland game was closer than it should have been. The Washington game was closer than it should have been. The New Orleans game was closer than it should have been. The New the Giants game closer than it should have been. And they were all because they gave up some big plays along the way. Um, Look, it's the NFL. The other guys get paid, too, and occasionally they're going to hit a big one, but the Rams have had trouble kind of salting games away. They've had trouble you know, getting off of the field in the fourth quarter. They've had trouble with that big play like we've talked about, and you're now going into the point of the season where you're not going to play another bad team. You're not going to play another team where you got a chance to be up 10, 12, 13, 14 points that you're going to be playing San Francisco and playoff teams from this point forward, so that's got to get cleaned up for sure. For sure. And look, you saw the Darius Slayton one. I mean, he just couldn't keep up with him step for step down the yeah. sideline and then Hyatt as well. I mean, he's getting burned deep. And I think for me, my big takeaway is very happy about the year he's had at that price. But I've been kind of monitoring him very closely to see, okay, is he someone you give $12, $13 million a year for no. some type of franchise cornerback money? No. The words of Randy Jackson, that's a no for me, dog. But that's going to do it for this episode of Locked on Rams. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on the X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. And as always, you can follow the people champ, Mr. Travis Rogers, on X at Travis Rogers. Until next time, whose house? It's Locked on Rams' house.